Welcome to Black Boss, where we highlight and celebrate entrepreneurship in the Black community. I'm your host, Michelle Forbes, and tonight I have with me owner and founders of Got Laundry, Mr. Ray and Miss uh, Takia. I'm sorry, Takia Wall. <laughs> yes. Mr. Ray and Miss Takia Wall, how are you guys? Good evening, Michelle. Thank you for having us. Not a problem. Thank you for joining me tonight. Amazing. Uh, really, really. Oh, thank you for having me. Yep, for sure. So uh, tell the people what is Got Laundry and how did you guys get started? Um, Got Laundry is a premier wash, and dry, wash, dry, and fold and dry cleaning delivery service. Um, we service all of Philadelphia and some parts of New Jersey. Uh, we started Got Laundry simply because it was a problem in our household. Mm -hmm. um, we are a blended family. We have, at the time when we started Got Laundry, we had five children. Okay. And, um, and we have grown to seven okay. <laughs> by way of twins. And um, we started Got Laundry straight out of nursing school. My husband and I, Ray, met, into, met in nursing school. Oh, so, wow. um, awesome. yes, we met in nursing school, yeah. um, our, for our family, we just decided or thought it was best that we had a parent at home, um, mm -hmm. at all times. I worked during the day. He worked at night. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we will meet up on the weekends. And, um, like I said, a family of that size, we have laundry and, yeah. you know, sometimes his expectations were, Hey, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes my expectations were. I don't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. um, right. again, we just realized and noticed that it was a problem in our household. So mm -hmm. um, once we were able to, and it didn't happen with the light bulb, like, oh, we can start our own business. But once we figured out a way to resolve the issue of laundry piling up mm -hmm. in our household, because again, it is a, it is a chore and a task that yeah. a lot of people don't like doing, right. especially <laughs> the right way from start to finish. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. People typically um, drop off somewhere and it's like, it'll make it to the wash, not to the dryer, make it to the dryer, not to the drawer. It's like... <laughs> oh, all the above and in the yeah. middle. <laughs> <laughs> and so once we realized that um, it was a problem in our household and we were able to come up with a resolve that uh, we figured if this is a problem for us, it has to be a problem for a lot of other people just as well. Right. The college right. student, the single mom, um, the elderly grandmother, uh, mm -hmm. for so many people, that that's when we decided to um, start the business Got Laundry. Awesome. I love that. It's so organic. I mean, for I us, it. yeah, for yeah. us, it was. <laughs> you know what I'm you talk about, you know, identifying a problem when you start a business and it was, it was clear, you know, your life had kind of presented it smack dab in your face. So I it say, definitely I love, smacked us. That. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, what issue, uh, well, you already answered it. I was going to say, what issue did you identify in the market? And you guys identified that you were already having difficulties in your own household. So you would think that other people were as well. Yes. Um, yeah. Ray, would you care to elaborate on that just as well? Hmm? The issue. Um, hey, Michelle. Listen, my wife hey, is doing Ray. such a great job. I figured there's no need of me saying much anything. And it's really hard to create dynamics and be in different spaces. So ultimately, she was flowing. So I was going to let her go with it. Um right. I mean, but to answer your question, I think she, she did a great job at that nonetheless. Yes, yeah, um, But in terms of, you know, the problems that we identified in the market, I think ultimately the problem was, you know, as you guys stated, and I don't want to kind of echo it too much, but you know, I, I think we're all just trying to figure out life and mm -hmm. manage our time only to realize yeah. that within a 24 hour day, there's something of necessity that's mm -hmm. not getting done. Yeah. And so as you go to plan your day, you know, you start off on a Monday with work and you mm -hmm. ambitiously look, look forward to the weekend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God forbid you got a family and your weekends look like sports and activities. And, yeah. you know, provided you may be a, a worshiper of whatever faith and then you got church on Sundays. You know, mm -hmm. those things like household laundry becomes further and further off the priority list as much yeah. as it is a high priority to have it for the next week 
the next event, the next activity. So the thing we identified is that families were suffering with the lack of time and the ability to manage all the things they need to do in that time. Um, yeah. And therefore, you know, we thought that laundry was one of those things that we could ideally start a business that could change the way people looked at laundry, change the way people were doing laundry, and ultimately how they were managing it around their lifestyles. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I, say, I think that was a great um, answer and contribution. So I'll, I'll hold you, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. For the, uh, <laughs> for, um, I know you said that you were that um, you were kind of solving the problem, giving people back their time because right. you know you guys recognize that um, not only were you know you guys struggling with with the balance of time, but you saw other families struggling with the balance of time, and it kind of something that's um, I'll say mundane but clearly necessary <laughs> as, yeah. as laundry because yeah. you can't you can't get around it. You right. know, cannot. right? You can't get around it. So you know, being Unless you want to buy new drawers and throw out the dirty <laughs> ones. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, if we're gonna talk, been there and done that too. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I was I was gonna ask you, right? You know, I, I feel like with um with the laundry, although it is a like we said, it's mundane and it's time consuming and all those things. It seems like something that families would be like, uh, I think we can still handle it. I think we can still handle it. So who was your target audience when when you guys, you know, first started it? I'm glad you said that because I, I think that's the overall problem right there, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, ideally, if we look at where we're at now in this state and time in, in our lives, we're, we're learning more and more how important our time is. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the yesteryears, when we were kids and our parents had to manage the household and our parents' parents had to manage the household, we didn't have as many resources to outsource, you know, a lot of the things that was mundane, as you're saying, or the things that consumed our time. Right. And so when we realized that ultimately this is the thing we're trying to tackle, we realized we also had to change the way people were thinking. Everyone right. is always trying to think, you know, I can muster an extra hour in the evening or the weekend to get this thing mm -hmm. done. So as you started out, when you're saying, when it comes to laundry and it's such a process, it's either you're going to get it in the wash, but you right. may not get it in the dry. Mm -hmm. If you get it in the dry, you may not going to fold it in time before oh, yeah. the wrinkles settle in, and you're not going to get it in the drawer. But let's right. go back to the very beginning. How about that yeah. chair in the bedroom that's piling up with clothes over top of your shoulder like an overarching monster, right? I feel, you know? I feel attacked. I feel attacked. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You see it? You feel it? Like, listen, I'm, I'm attacking you because I'm being attacked in my own household with right. that chair full of laundry. So yeah. everybody got that monster lurking in the background yeah. and it's called yeah. laundry. And so, so to answer your question, what we identified, who our target market was, we thought it was going to be, um, you know, Pretty much, uh, being honest and transparent, at the time we were nurses, we thought it was going to be nurses we would target, right? Okay. Because okay. I knew the work atmosphere and the, um, the work progress around nurses. Yeah. Nurses is burning the candle on both ends. Yeah. You're trying to put in 16-hour days, trying to squeeze in your sleep, and trying to manage your, your relationship, your family, or your life outside of work, right. uh, only to just to keep jumping into scrubs. You know, so ideally, I thought that was going to be our target, only to quickly find out our target was mostly middle-aged women, um, women, you know, 30, I'm going to say between 30 and 40, ideally, okay, um, and probably more 35 to 45, uh, but somewhere in that, in that range, you know, 30 mm -hmm. to 40, 40 to 50, ideally. Uh, mm -hmm. Women actually, without me targeting women, became, you know, they were the target. Okay. I thought single men would be, you know, attracted to the service. I thought it was going to be yeah. a bachelor type move. Uh, but it was definitely women who understood the value of their time and how they themselves had to stop being the um, the superwoman of I can do it. I can do it. I can do it all. I just need one more hour. I, I can wake up earlier, go to bed later. I can lose a little sleep around this. And yeah. really, women was our yeah. number one yeah. target. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. No, I love, I love the, um, I love the idea of, you know, the, like you said, you're changing minds around it too, because there is an idea of yesteryear and, you know, there's an idea now of really the value of time and what can be accomplished when we view our time as time to accomplish something really. So 
It's hand, funny you say so. that. Go ahead. It's, it's funny you say that because I think it's really amazing how how we view our time and convenience, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm. the, the average person may order out three, four, or five times a week. Yeah. Right. And Absolutely. usually we'll do that after making groceries. Right. And you know, I'm old school when I say make groceries. So listen, <laughs> you know, when, 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 when you make groceries, you you actually doing some real shopping for the household, but All then right. you still order out, you know, yeah. instead of cooking, you go and eat out, you yeah. know, and, and we're in that space where delivery has taken on a whole new monster of its own, a whole new face of its own. But yeah. ideally, folks aren't thinking about laundry delivery. Yeah, that's you get true. what I'm saying? That's so it's true. like you got yeah. food in your refrigerator, but you're still eat out. Yeah. Right. But when you Dang, tell folks, you know, there has, like, that mindset, over. yeah, exactly. You're but when right. you tell folks, yeah. you know, I do laundry delivery service, it's like, oh no, I do my own laundry. Yeah. Or well, not even that. But they'll why? say, I, I have a washer and dryer at or home. Or I have it's a washer like, and dryer. Yeah. You have a stove too, but you're not using it. <laughs> you're ordering. <laughs> You're right. ordering out. So you, again, it's the it's the mind frame. Yeah, it is. You know, it's definitely it changing the mind frame. And so, and sometimes um something you said earlier, Michelle, um, and you too, Ray, not just women, but we think we can do it all mm -hmm. and, and everything else. And Ray, you hit the nail um when you said the whole thing about convenience. We get sometimes mm -hmm. that um thankfully our laundry service isn't just for um people without washer and dryers or who can't make it to the laundromat or has to have a laundry service um, always recurring. It could be, Michelle, you just fell off last week. You had a rough week. Okay. And, and like you said, yeah, your okay. laundry's backed okay. up. I'm going to give myself, you know, yeah. my time back and the convenience of, you know what, let me just order a laundry service to get my week back up to par and that then is. I'm good after that. You know, okay. again, it's just it's just one of those services to to keep in your back pocket, you know, for sometimes just in case, hey, yeah. sometimes we have an off week. Um, I've come to realize that uh my laundry coming home from vacation don't always make it to my wash and dryer. It stays in that suitcase. <laughs> to the next vacation. I got two. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, and listen this is no attack on you I'm talking to me like, I'm talking oh, straight no. <laughs> I'm talking wrong straight wrong. Wrong. And, and again um, we're a resource and we can we can find you can find somewhere in your life um, um, in your family where mm -hmm. you can you can add a laundry service to you know? I was going to say I'm glad you said that Takia because what services do you guys offer through Got Laundry Yes. Yeah, so um, at this point in time, we offer wash, dry, and fold services. Okay. And it's and it's really simple. You have you laundry. One time or recurring. Uh, yes. Right. Okay. Um, and you have laundry. You call us to pick it up to service mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we are washing it. We're um, drying it. We're folding it, and we have a forty-eight hour turnaround. So if we're in your area or you schedule us to pick up your laundry on a Monday, we pick it up and we return it back to you on Wednesday, 48 hours later. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I was, I was looking for you guys, um, Instagram and I saw, you know, some things about, um, business to business. I was wondering, cause I feel like that's, um, that's becoming more of I can't even say a buzzword because it's not a buzzword. It just is what it is. Like as far as far as the you know contractual relationship, but I'm just seeing it pop up more. So um, within your business, do you do you guys um, use business to business? And if so, would you give any advice around it? Ray or Tiki? <laughs> so I, I didn't specify. I didn't specify the answer, but. Um, yeah, I, I was pausing and deferring to my wife, so I was okay. going to wait and let her take which, that. <laughs> which is fine. So, um, again, a couple of things, Michelle. Uh, at first, when we started Got Laundry, we thought we thought that um, resident residentials, people that look like us, um, would benefit from laundry services. It mm -hmm. wasn't until as the years have gone by and um, our most recent. Uh, global environment that we're in, yes. um, COVID, that uh, we realized that daycare centers, spas, restaurants, they, yeah. uh, 
they need laundering services just as well. So right. um, prior to COVID, we started getting into business, into the business to business realm of okay. thinking outside the box and saying, hey, this is not laundry is not just an issue for um the single mom, the college student, um, there are uh, physical therapy uh, facilities, uh, spas, hair salon, nail salons, they use towels, they use tablecloths, that again, um, especially prior to COVID, but especially now, mm-hmm. need to utilize the laundry services to make sure that um, they're safe, they're clean, um, mm-hmm. and again, they're just providing their clients as a top quality service with their, uh, with their linens just as well. Gotcha. Okay. So the, the business, the business to business was, um, an expansion, especially during the, the time of COVID where things were a little sketchier. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of other, of, of other people kind of falling into, um, different transitions in their own business, um, during COVID that was actually beneficial to, you know, the business that they weren't necessarily thinking about before. So I, I just want to caution a little correction here. No, it wasn't yeah. wasn't a transition for expansion. Ideally, we were doing a great deal of uh, business to business um, you know, cool. projects prior to COVID. Okay. It was just that COVID, you know, kind of shocked the whole world and not just mm-hmm. us. And when yeah. it did, uh, prior, so let me go back. Prior to COVID, we were already thinking, should we transition and just strictly do business to business? Gotcha. Just like any business, you're always evaluating mm-hmm. where... Where can you do two things in your business well? Where can mm-hmm. you be consistent and can you, and be predictable? Right. right? And so right. in order for us to be consistent and predictable, the best way for us to do that was to kind of ideally focus our business strictly on the business-to-business relationships. Gotcha. Because the business-to-business relationships didn't give us as much challenge or obstacles as the uh, residents had, if I could yeah. say. And so with us coming back to COVID, uh, coming back to business after COVID, it was like, okay, we already had a, a good hiatus. Here's mm-hmm. a good opportunity to kind of cut out what we were thinking about cutting out to begin with, which was, right. you know, cut out residential. And not so much cut it out to stop doing it. We were, we were actually going to, you know, bifurcate. We were actually going to separate two different services. We were going to have a okay. residential service and a business service. Gotcha. Uh, but with COVID coming back, it was ideal to kind of only focus on business because what we needed to do to adhere to COVID protocols Mm-hmm. you know, the contact list, you know, interaction, you know, the set it and forget it, you know, scheduling concept and mm-hmm. to not be able to have to deal with the, you know, everyday person who said, oh, I forgot to leave the laundry out or I'm yeah, not home yeah. and I can't get it together. All I right. know I'm on schedule. Can you come tomorrow? So mm-hmm. ideally we wanted to go with B2B because it was very simple. We would pick yeah. up during your business hours. That could be yeah. anywhere from open to close and mm-hmm. in between. And because you know we're coming and you understand we're coming for, you've already set aside our service, our our need to service. So we didn't have to jump through a bunch of hurdles, so to say. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we we wanted to go strictly B2B as a result of coming back from COVID. But the demands had been so high for us to come back residential that we couldn't ignore, you know, the request. You know, so Mm -hmm. as you may have noticed in our Instagram, we already Mm -hmm. articulated we're coming back with... um, residential services i believe as of the 17th or the 19th of this month and a lot of folks are very happy uh i'm happy my wife is happy i mean we're happy to service both of our separate bases uh but nonetheless just i just want to correct that that, you know i ideally i wish that um you know b2b was to expand and grow the business it was ideally just to kind of get the business back up and going figure out life and business around you know covid protocol and then quickly get back to the residential service Gotcha. And, gotcha. and let me just say, and I'm glad you said, um, I'm glad yeah. you clarified that, Ray. And when I say we are excited to uh, get back to residential services, um, we're still implementing um, safety for our drivers, safety for our um, residents, uh, you know, to be as contactless as possible, launching in an area where um, it's safe and secure, where our drivers can come and pick it up, put it in the truck and keep it pushing but um we are very social you know so we we miss the um the interaction and the engagement with our residents um they're not just clients to us 
we they their family you yeah. know um you doing somebody laundry you you know you get personal you know so um again we we were very adamant and listening to our 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 clients right. and, and seeing that you know that the demand was still there even in the midst of these times and like i said uh by day we're nurses we've been and got laundry for um, 11 years now and it's our job to it's our job and our passion to serve so and that's just what we that's what we enjoy doing naturally that's awesome. yeah that's awesome so uh speaking of looking at your um your social media and everything I saw the no pants subway ride so what was the purpose of the no pants subway ride <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it sounds crazy, um, but uh, we got into the No Pants Subway ride. Uh, Ray and I are very sp- spontaneous individuals. Um, we're very uh, daring. We like to have fun. And I can't remember how we stumbled across this actual event that was taking place in our city, Philadelphia. Okay. And, um, and if you do some more research um, in the very beginning of us starting Got Laundry, our tagline was drop your pants and um, never do laundry again. Again, you got to mm-hmm. take off your pants. You got to right. drop your pants. Drop you got to put your right? pants in, the, in the laundry, in the hamper. And here, we're, we're here. Once you drop them, we're going to pick them up. So right. um, It was also a play on words. Yes, yeah. play on words. That was our tagline. So at that point in time, Ray, was that what year was that when we were participants of the No Pants? Okay, got gotcha. you. I think it, I think it was 20, 2011 or twenty twelve. Yeah, I was. Yeah, um, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, we were participants so, of the that, so because you guys had the um had the tagline the the drop and fail. Okay, got you. Correct. So, right, so, right. so my. My idea, okay. and I'm sorry to interrupt, I'll let my wife finish, but my idea was mind. to jump in, jump into the social event, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Did, did a little bit of research of what it was, and I thought, you know, it had no purpose to begin with. So that was that's the, that was the number one, you know, okay. I guess ringer for me was like this thing has no purpose, but uh-huh. it looks all the way like young, stupid, adult fun, right? right? You know, only to realize it's also going on around the world. So I was like, okay, not only is it young, stupid, adult fun, it's also uh-huh. impactful globally. So I was like, all right, let's get out here and see what it's hitting for to kind of get an idea of what the, you know, curators of this event is trying to do. And when I realized they weren't really tying it to any one motivation, only to later find out that they became a media company, nonetheless, um, um, I, I realized, yo, not only can we do this and take it over in Philadelphia, because Philadelphia wasn't producing in the participation numbers as other big cities were. Okay. I was like, Got you know, you. we can do this in Philadelphia, guerrilla market our business, yeah. One, you know, right? Because we were, we were getting free airtime from the news station, radios, and so forth, coming right. out and interviewing us. Because, like, yo, who else are these crazy people out here? You know, okay. taking their pants off in the winter. Right. right. You know? In January, it was, it was us in January, in January, nonetheless. So that was a good way to kind of introduce Scott Laundry to Philadelphia and to the yeah. world. Um, but ideally, you know, we really wanted to create a purpose to it, so we made mm-hmm. it more of our um, our social arm to kind of really introduce our care for the community and mm-hmm. why we wanted to do more in the community, uh, particularly the homeless community. And so dropping the pants was not only a, a play on words, it was mm-hmm. also our marketing term, it was also our slogan. It was the concept of, you know, dropping your clothes outside for us to pick them up. And then right, it turned right. into our, our way to give back to the community by having people donate those pants and socks, which was the one under-donated product to the uh, homeless community. And so we started to make a collection around that and it became a clothing drive. So therefore, okay. although the No Pants Subway Ride was a real fun social uh, event, it also mm-hmm. tied to a very conscious social cause and we created that. Awesome, yeah, and, I, and I'm happy that you brought that up because actually it goes into my um, my next question about, about you guys. Um, the, the social consciousness also behind God Laundry and the different events you got participated in. I know you said in particularly um, around homelessness. So um, I guess in the formation of uh, God Laundry, was that something that was 
um, initially important to you guys to, I guess, bring awareness um, around or participate in? Or did, you know, you guys started and really started to learn, you know, the um, the issues around homelessness and, and lack? So, so, so um, if I understand your question correctly. So mm -hmm. ideally, going back to when we started Got Laundry, me and my wife mm -hmm. were uh, very faithful uh, members and followers of a church called Chosen Generation that kind of evolved and became master builders. And, yeah. you know, being Christians, uh, one of the things that, you know, we hang our hat on is always giving back, you know, being conscious of the community and the community's needs. Yeah. Uh, and, and then that tied into both of us already being nurses. And so mm -hmm. we, 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 you can't care for the human or the human body and not care for the community. You know, they're all one and the same. Uh, yeah. And so we kind of tied into that as many social mm -hmm. causes as we possibly could. And to be completely honest, I think it was more the social causes that really drove us to be more entrepreneurs and business owners because mm -hmm. it was the only way we could think about how we could have bigger impact in giving back. And so therefore, okay. we started looking at the homeless community and really started learning more about what that was like. You know, being nurses, we understood how homelessness can occur because mm -hmm. it's one of the things they teach in nursing school. Uh, but we really dove into, you know, how it was impacting our city and every major city across the world. Uh, yeah. And that quickly morphed into us partnering with other people, you know, Disability Pride and the young lady who mm -hmm. built that is a big friend of ours because, you know, again, homelessness is not um, no one person is exempt from homelessness, right? right. You know, we're Absolutely. all either one paycheck away or one bad decision yep. away or one... Yep. Psycho psychological, you know, process of the way from Absolutely. homelessness. And so therefore all those things started to come together. And mm -hmm. so larger being our business, there, there was an area where there's a ton of donations, there's a ton of uh, left behind things, there's things people don't want. Every season, some of us who are doing a lot better and, and economically, we're constantly buying new things, new clothes and getting rid of the old ones. So we mm -hmm. realized, you know, we can do a lot more here in this space and being more impactful in our community by creating a, a very social cause and a social arm to our service. Yeah, and, I, I love that. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. And Michelle, real quick, and that's how mm -hmm. we got into some of the other events that we um, helped sponsor or participate mm -hmm. with. Um, in April, we were part of a, a, a pillow fight uh, okay. event that took place in the, um, in the city just as well pillow fight again that's fun <laughs> you know right. yeah. we've been in our family and hotel rooms with our children and you hear someone <laughs> say pillow fight we're grabbing pillows and we're just swinging and everything else an event mm -hmm. that took place here um in the city which was a pillow fight for people to have a moment to be free childlike right. and again got laundry um joins forces and say hey we have pillows Yep. What are we going to do with those pillows? Yeah. Let us launder the pillows and give them out to the homeless. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, they, they need a place to, they need something to rest their head on um, mm -hmm. where they are in their shelter or whatever. So again, we just found, we just find, found avenues to, uh, to pick our, to put uh got laundry and uh, there's other mm -hmm. uh, events that we are part, we were a part of when, uh, clothes and donations were collected for people trying to get back into the uh, workforce and they mm -hmm. had uh, business suits and and clothing and everything else for you know that were being donated let got laundry mm -hmm. come in step in we'll launder you know because everyone wants to mm -hmm. look a certain way Absolutely. look so yeah. again laundry laundry services are needed and yeah. we found our way through that door just as well again um some people look at got laundry and say that we're just doing dirty laundry in our head and our minds we just see mm -hmm. us giving back people time and making sure that everyone deserve and have the right to look and feel clean and presentable that's yeah. how we get that's how we give back yeah i i love that i love that idea i love the um Cause you know you're you're really t killing two birds in one stone, right? You have the you have the social responsibility piece, you know the clear social responsibility piece, which is really awesome. But you're able to partner it um, in events that are already taking place, but have fantastic marketing with them because it's around <laughs> clothing yep. or linen or yeah, that that's fantastic. I love yeah. it. 
Yeah. yeah. So yes, I can. I I would agree with you. I can see that you guys are are clearly you know doing more than than just dirty laundry, and it's really about the service of the person. Correct. And help helping them. You know. Help, helping them to accomplish some things that they necessarily may not have had the time to accomplish, or even um, uh, people who who are experiencing um, homelessness, you know, to to be able to assist assist them and give them a level of dignity back. It's yeah, I, I dignity, love it. Yeah, we all deserve it. We all should Absolutely. have it. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, I guess this is this is a, a good. Next question. What would you, Keep what do you guys think? Cause I mean, you guys might have different answers for this one, but what do you guys think is the most fulfilling part of your business? Or was that it? What you guys just said? <laughs> no, no, I, I guess I'm pausing because I really had to check my memory banks because there's a lot mm. of fulfilling parts of our business. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell this one story without, you know, giving up identity, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I had one client that was my client for, for nearly seven years. Mm -hmm. I, I love this woman. Um, I didn't know her story until afterwards, right? So she, uh, you know, typical household, you know, family of four, had mm -hmm. two young boys at home. Uh, and this young lady, you know, was going through chemo, right? And so at the time she was going through chemo, that meant a lot of the things that was going on in the household had to fall on her husband, who ideally was taking care of the household from a perspective of, you know, work and employment finances. and so forth. And, and finances, right? They both were working, but nonetheless, that, you know, ideally was the dynamics of the household. And when, when the mom took ill, the husband had to still figure out how I take care of my family financially outside mm -hmm. in my professional realm. And how can I take some of the workload off of my wife's hands and shoulders while she's enduring chemo and things of that nature. Um, right. And it wasn't until probably about four or five years after using our services, you know, she's always had gratitude for us, but, you know, you, you would find, and I found this in a lot of my uh, interactions with some of my customers that they tell us their story. And mm -hmm. she would tell me all the time, Ray, you don't know how much of a help your service has been to me and my family yeah. during this time. And this time yeah. wasn't temporary, although it may have been, but it wasn't temporary by definition. It was right. years of en yeah. en enduring. And yeah. so to hear that, when you think about it, it's like, my God, it was those moments along with many other ones. And I'm sure my wife has some of her own that made me say, this thing is bigger than us. This thing is bigger mm -hmm. than laundry. This thing is mm -hmm. bigger than just my business. We are really impacting lives right here. We're, we're yeah. saving households, we're saving marriages. We're saving, you know, families, you know, yeah. and it wasn't until she um, kicked cancer, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and that was a huge, yeah. huge yes. accomplishment. Yes, so, was. you know what I mean? That's cancer, as they like to say, and I don't want to, you know, <laughs> drop no F-bombs on your podcast. You know? <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, cancer That's sucks. I you know what I mean? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But, you know, cancer sucks. And so I'm glad to know that she overcame it. And we were a part of that story. Yeah. You know, and, and it wasn't until she overcame it and her boys started moving into uh, teenagehood, adolescence and so yep. forth. And she, she was like, service. you know, I'm going to drop the service, not because I don't love it, but because it's right. time that may, I teach my boys a responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean? And she's okay. like, and maybe once yeah. they've grown up and out of the house, me and my husband will come back to the service. <laughs> because <laughs> we don't need to learn how to do laundry. We already again. know how to so, do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so so it, it was that impact in the household that we had no awareness of that when we mm -hmm. did find out that made, you know, the best part of our job or the best part of our service, you know, it's that unknown essence that, we're doing yeah. something far greater in the lives of people than what we really know. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That was a great story. I forgot about. I forgot yeah. about. I uh, we we got I... stories. We got stories for days that we, really we... changes the dynamics of. Oh, you guys just picking up dirty drawers. Yeah. Like you know, you know I don't think you got in there yet. But when I think about some of the obstacles in in starting our service, was just overcoming the the negative comments, whether they were funny or not. When, when you start a business, your business is just as personal to you as your little kid that may not yes, be the cutest, is. you know what I'm saying? Or your kid that may have, you know, some physical or some, you know, seen disabilities that most people might, you know, make a joke at. 
you know, right. my business was a handicap at the very beginning, if I'm being completely honest and using yeah. the word and how I view something I didn't know how to raise. You get yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. so when, when people were making comments like that, I had to really put that in the back of my mind where internally right. I'm just like, man, they probably right. You know what I'm saying? This thing ain't going to work. <laughs> Nobody really wants to service. I must be a fool to really think about I'm going to be successful at this thing. You know, but it wasn't, you know, and, and, and being t- totally honest and transparent, I didn't mm-hmm. go into this with all the confidence in the world. I didn't go in this with the mm-hmm. I believe in myself, you know, mentality. I want in this, I'm going to try this thing until yeah. it works. You right. know what I'm saying? And only yeah. because I knew I had to stick with it until it worked is why I did it. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, and I, I didn't know when it was going to work. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know when it was going to work and I didn't know when it was working until after it had already worked. And that was five right. years into the joint. So when I think right. about it, it's like, man, it was very easy to think about, you know, quitting and walking away from it until I really started thinking about how big it was. And it wasn't just about the the job itself or the task yeah. of doing laundry. It was the impact we were making in the lives of the households or the people we were serving. And yeah. and, pe- and just to piggyback okay. off of you, right? And so those emails those uh those letters those um those five star recommendations that we received it was those moments it was those things that said it was the phone ringing Mm -hmm. okay the phone it was those moments where we Mm -hmm. said okay hang in there we must be doing something right the phone is still the phone is still ringing um Mm -hmm. We're getting we're getting five star reviews. Uh, we're getting um, personal with our clients to be able mm-hmm. to say, "Hey, you know, this is more than just laundry to me. You guys have really impacted our lives." Because, as my husband has said, there were moments and times where we didn't know it all. Um, we were struggling trying to figure it out, mm-hmm. and it's easy to quit. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. there'll be those moments of us wanting to quit and the phone is ringing and it's ringing or we're getting a contract you know a big business contract that's coming our way to say hey we found you guys we want to you know we want to contract you guys and and behind closed (laughs) doors we're praying and saying okay god we're here yeah yeah we have a purpose we have a purpose we have a reason Mm -hmm. and we're going to keep on moving forward so that's how we handle those things I mean that that is the entrepreneurial journey. That's why I, yeah. I love I love doing those inter- these interviews because it's really it is not far off. You know the story the stories are not far off from each other. And some something I particularly like about um, you guys' business and your your cousin Jay as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like, you know, you guys both have these these um, service businesses that surface wise, it would just seem like you're doing laundry or you're just a cleaning service. But when you actually have a conversation with you guys and you get to the heart of why you're doing what you're doing and you're getting to the heart of um, the faith aspect in, in what you're doing, and, you know, paying attention to the, the fact that even though you, you you guys had uncertainties about what was going on, you had the level of faith and and God essentially was showing up. You know, Amen. Show, every time up in the business, absolutely. So every time. I, I love I love these stories because they're just they're they're a confirmation, really. You know, they're 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 just they're just so close. So I love because I believe you have to love your business in order for it to be successful. Heck yes. And and I love um I love that people are the are the center of it. You know, right. even right. even though it's the I was about to say it's the it's the service aspect, it's really the the building of relationships and what you guys can offer other human beings around the service that you provide. And I I I'm all of it full circle, you know, makes makes sense from you guys, you, um, from your own, you know, practice of, of being Christian from your, from your background in nursing. Um, it really is. It's, it's full service. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome. I, I love to be that. here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you really hear the story, you just yes. see, see it come right. And it's like, yep, got it. Awesome. So my last question, guys, Okay. What advice would you give um, someone looking to get into your industry or in entrepreneurship in general? Um, what advice would you give them if they had some reluctancy? Um, 
the first piece of advice I would give them um, would be to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think, again, we put too much on our shoulders or in our or in our minds to make us feel like we have to figure this all out by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I've come to learn that um, we weren't the first people to, to do a laundry, mm -hmm. you know, delivery service. Might have right. been um, the way we started up in our area, but there we weren't the first and we're not going to be the last. Um, and, Although and, we might have been an early pioneer in Philadelphia, I'm, I'm going to take a claim to that thing. But and you know what? And <laughs> you should. <laughs> and you should. <laughs> and you should. <laughs> um, but again, um, we have to be able to have someone um, to be able to bounce ideas off of. Um, we have to. Be, we should be able to have someone that's already in the industry or know something about the industry to say, hey, what do you think? What do you suggest? Um, what resources do you know or have? Um, because again, uh, starting something from the ground up with not a lot of information or resources, uh, we, you know, we haven't told this. And I know my husband says I, I may, you know, tell too much, but uh, we, we, we took literally a couple of hundred dollars yeah. <laughs> got some t-shirts got yeah. some door hangers and we we made our website and, and had a phone number and said okay <laughs> And, and we and we hit the streets from the muscle, from the muscle yeah. We yeah, hit the and streets. We had our Me and my kids wife with and five children was out and there we, passing out yes. flyers. And we were passing out flyers on the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we yeah. now we're in the position to be able to tell someone a different route <laughs> of you know starting the business because you know we made some of the mistakes, we experienced the trials and errors, the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I, I think my piece of advice would be to to find a to find a mentor in the okay. industry that you're looking to uh, go into, so you can have um, a good resource to start off with from the very beginning. Gotcha. How about you, Ray? So I'm going to say this. First of all, I'm going to start it like this. Listen, if, if you married and you don't know and understand that sometimes being married don't mean always agreeing, I don't yeah. agree with my wife, right? So I'm, I'm going to make that known right now, first and foremost. And we might have an argument when I get home, but I'll deal with that later. But um, yes. the, the, the mentor thing, nah. To keep yeah. like, oh, I got you. Look, look, she, she always ready to fight. Nah. Um, Not nah, at babe. all. Not at all. Nah, babe, that it's was, called that was a, it's that, called conversation. Ah, so, that's what it's called now. Okay. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> now that that was a good answer and a good response, and that was your answer. Um, having been through it, I'm I'm going to say finding a mentor is so cliche. That's that's an easy answer for a lot of people to say, right? Because you know it's not until later on in your business that you realize how impactful and how important a mentor is. But mm -hmm. being completely honest, for anybody that's starting out and trying to break into the industry. Um, a lot of the people you're looking at to be mentors, they don't have it to be a mentor. You mm. know, they don't, they don't, a lot of them are still trying to figure out themselves and right. won't be honest about that. And then the few who are, they want you to pay for mentorship. And I, I believe mentorship shouldn't be, you know, don't get me wrong, I think everyone's time should be valued how one values it, but I don't think it should always come at a high price tag. Mm. You know, one of, one of the things I tell people when they come to me for a mentorship, I tell them all the time, and, I, and it's just a joke, and it's a play on words, and that is, I don't have any free time. Mm. And then they go to, like, how much are you going to charge me? I never said I was going to charge you. What I'm saying is that my time isn't free, meaning that my time is very valuable. Mm -hmm. and if you're not ready for what I'm about to give you and you don't have the time when I say I have time, mm -hmm. then I'm probably not the mentor for you. You get what right. I'm saying? You know, right. not that I want you to pay me to make time for you. I'm going to make time because I believe everybody needs a helping hand along the way. Yeah. Uh, but but the advice I think I'll probably give folks is that um, get comfortable with no, mm. right? Get get very comfortable with people saying no. Get comfortable with the you know the the two face of I love you, I like your idea, I like your business, I'm going to yeah. support you, but I'm not going to support not, you. But you know not for real. But, but not for real with that smile. Right. 
Yeah. You know, or, or, or that I will support you when they support you. Mm. Or how about that when you make money and you're successful, I've always been here supporting you. You know what I'm saying? So, so, I, so I want people to understand how, how valuable the no's are. The no's are just as if not more valuable than the yeses. Because yeah. the no's is going to tell you who you need to become, how you need to develop, how thick your skin needs to be for this thing that you said earlier, Michelle, mm-hmm. is that in order for your business to be successful, you got to love your business. Yeah. Guess what? Because you love your business doesn't mean everybody else does. You got that right. You know what I'm saying? And and all right. the people who say they do don't really know that they do. And my they might love you. Yeah. Or they might love what they think you're going to do. Or they might love your your price point. They might love what they think, how much money you're going to make. You know right. what I mean? But a lot of people are sitting around waiting for you to fail because they want to be able to say, hey, you mean you in the same boat. I told you you couldn't do it. So get, yeah. get used to the nose. Uh, I, I think if I can say this and not be too long winded, uh, what else having seven children? I, I, I told all my kids this. Um, my kids will probably tell you dad never says no. And, yeah. and, and, and part of why I became an entrepreneur was to provide my kids with three things. And I'm not going to go too deep into it, but uh, it's called AIR. A is for access, I is for information, R is for resources. And when I realized I had that, there was no reason why I had to tell my kids or anybody no anymore because I mm-hmm. have what you need to be successful. But I, I took my kids out there very early on to teach them, you know, that this idea that we love and we believe is going to be good. Not everyone else does, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the, the hardest thing in my journey was when we started out and took our kids out to pass out flyers and I told mm-hmm. my kids how to greet people with a smile, extend mm-hmm. your hand with a handshake, you know what I mean? Look them in the eye before you hand them what it is you got. Like you got to catch them with who you are before you give them the product or the thing or the literature because the very yeah. moment you do, they're going to say no. And even after you've greeted them in the most humble and sincere way, they're still going to say no. And I wanted yeah. them to know what no felt like and how 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 impactful that is and how mm-hmm. you got to go home and process that no. Yeah. Process that no, right? Because it's easy to take a yes and you come home high and elated. Like, right, like oh, right, God, right, right, right. my business yeah. about to take off. It's popping. No, I need you to know how to live with those no's because it's those yeah. no's that's going to help you go back and, and redefine your message, how to, how to recraft your work, how to create, recraft your art, how to really you know, figure out your business and what yeah. it is you need to do. Who is your target? Who should you really be targeting to? What is the message for that target? But ultimately, um, start start getting used to no's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because even you're going to get no's from them so-called mentors. You're going to get no's from, you know, I mean, your family and friends. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that would be the one piece of advice I would give folks. And secondly, anybody who wants to get into the, the particular business I'm in, and uh, just like my wife, I, I probably say too much. I'm your guy. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm, I mean, oh, I'm listen, on, listen. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm an open, I'm an open book, and I'm yeah. full of resources. So I got air for mm-hmm. everybody. I want that, all of us to breathe, right? So play on words. You know what I mean? Whether this so that's is, a, you know, what that's I mean? a mentor or not? Yeah, and, and, and exactly, and, and that's what I'm ultimately saying. <laughs> so this, this is, this is like. You know, this ain't a George Floyd, I can't breathe. I want you to ever say you can't breathe. I want you to yeah. know that if you think you can't breathe, call me. I'm mm-hmm. Mr. Air. I got access, mm-hmm. information, and resources. resources. And if you're serious about what you're trying to do, I'm I'm, I'm going to point you in a direction. I'm going to let you know what I know and don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? And one of the things I've learned very well is to know very well what I don't know. Right. But that don't mean we can't get it done because there's someone else who does know what we don't know that's willing to help. So Absolutely. put the piece, you know, move move along the way, knowing that you don't have all the pieces, right? And yeah. be okay with that journey, and know that the way faith works, the way the world works, and the universe works, mm-hmm. success is in your movement. Yeah. I, another piece of advice: That's talk awesome. to talk to everybody you encounter about your idea and your vision. Some people want some. I don't want to tell people what I'm doing because if it fails, I don't want them to know it failed. Again, that's a no right there. So take the no's, right. but share your idea because again, people are not going to believe it if you don't believe it. You right. know what I'm saying? So those are the three things I would tell people, you know, get comfortable with no. You know, if you're trying to break into this industry, holler at me, you know what I mean? Ray Wall mm-hmm. underscore got laundry at Instagram, yep. Ray Wall CEO at, you know, on Facebook or got mm-hmm. laundry on Instagram, mm-hmm. got laundry on Facebook, got laundry mm-hmm. on Twitter. Like, no, I'm, I'm Mr. Got Laundry. If you don't know that, I'm right okay. here. Okay. Call me because I got laundry on my body. But yeah. nonetheless, um, and the third thing is, you know, just just 
share your vision. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't don't be on this. It's, it's mine. It's, it's so unique because at this day and age, there's nothing that's too unique anymore that no one hasn't already tried. There's yeah. some people, some some of your most successful people, are people who stopped doing it because they couldn't figure out how to keep going. You know what yeah. I mean? But you don't know that they tried it if you didn't have a conversation with them about what you're trying to do. And um, yeah. ultimately, that's that's how I put the whole the the air thing put together. You know, through endless conversations and endless chatter with different people, yeah. and different things. Only to realize along the way, I just got a nugget from a bunch of a bunch of people that I put together and created a successful format. You know, so right. um, I'm sorry to be long winded. I don't even know no, if I answered the question correctly, but you yeah, know, so that would be my advice for you know the entrepreneur or business owner who's trying to get into business or even break into the laundry industry. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, th- I think um, I think both answers both answers were excellent, and it's funny because your second answer is like the mentor of your wife's <laughs> right, right. that he didn't agree with but again we're going no. to have another conversation <laughs> offline she, she, she got me all wrong i never said you know mentor is not a good way to go it's just that they're hard to find yeah they can be hard to find they're yeah. hard to find and, and and the ones you want are the ones who aren't don't have time for you Right. You know, I mean, think Sorry. about Shark Tank, right? You know, I mean, people look at Damon, you know, uh, Damon Johns, whatever that boy name is, or Mr. Wonderful, and they like, yo, those are mentors. They're not mentors. No. You know what I mean? No. They don't, they don't have they time. They don't have time. They don't have time. Yeah. No, oh, no, definitely not. But again, just going to the, the to the topic at hand, like you said, for for us in particular, using us as an example, um, because we have, because we have a, a, a great following on mm-hmm. our social media, Facebook and, and Instagram, um, because thankfully and prayerfully, we have exceeded 10 years in business, which is um, which is uh, a milestone, which is great. And we're, you know, hoping and praying for five, 10 and to continue on. Um, we've had numerous people or quite a few people reach out to us, slide into our DMs and say, hey, mm-hmm. um, I've been noticing what you've been doing. I see what you're doing. Um, I'm interested or I've started doing the same thing in my area or, mm-hmm. or out of the state. I would love to, I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, I, it's, it's no, it's no secret that, that my husband and I still work on our business and in our business. Um, right. And when I say that to say, I was out doing a, a a delivery, a drop off, and a young lady at one of the centers, the daycare centers I was dropping off at, she said, I've been seeing these bags, never knew, you know, who were the uh, the people behind this industry. I've been talking to my sister about this, that, and the third. I would mm-hmm. love to, I would love to sit sit you down and, and discuss our, you know, our, our plans, our goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said, Again, Got Laundry, you can find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Please reach out to me. So I'm just using that as an example of she had questions. Um, right. She had some, you know, she had some great ideas and she was mm-hmm. able to catch me and, and and offer, you know, an ask, which is essentially, hey, can I have a conversation with you? And, and to put me in the realm of a mentor to help her figure out some things along the way. So, right. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say, you know, to uh, to raise part of uh, um, point of the Shark Tank, you know, panel, they may not be your mentors, but also, you know, like like you said, to Kieran, as Ray offered himself up, you know, and, and service to other people, there could absolutely be, you know, some young man or woman, as you just said, out here or, I mean, anybody at any stage of life, really, yeah. who's looking for looking for a change or a transition who just needs, you know, some information and you run into, you know, somebody like you, Takir, or somebody like you, right? And you will be great mentors because you have, you have the heart for it, which is fantastic. Right. You know, so, so it's, kind of, it's kind of like a ladder, you know, as you yes. learn, like, reach out, you get it, like, you know, it's the yep. one man left behind. <laughs> yes, I like that analogy. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So thank, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you guys being here with me tonight. Thank you for um, for everything you shared. Thank you for, you know, your passion. I think you guys are fantastic um, examples of really, you know, doing doing something, doing a service for someone, but really showing up with the with the heart piece of it and being able yes, to yes. Um, connect. And I, I think that's I think that's fantastic. So 
there there are two things I have left for you guys to do. Okay. Um, Ray already kind of started doing it when he he went on the uh, the mentor the <laughs> mentor spiel. <laughs> but um, first thing, please uh, tell the people where they can find you guys. Go ahead, Ray. <laughs> oh, you got it, Shorty. Listen, I'm. I'm <laughs> Now you, uh, <laughs> I, I ain't got no voice. Pull that tonight. arm out one more time. I, I ain't get wow. tatted yet. <laughs> I ain't get tatted yet. But wow, um, so go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, nope, you got it. I mean, you want it? Nope. <laughs> okay, um, folks, to find us on Instagram at Got Laundry, uh, we're on Facebook at Got Laundry, uh, mm -hmm. we're on Twitter at Got Laundry. Um, with that being said, your best bet in reaching us is probably going to be uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, okay. We, we kind of let our Twitter kind of fade because we started learning how each separate uh, resource of social media has got a different means, a different need mm -hmm. for the platform. Uh, right. But you can catch us on uh, Instagram and Facebook. You can email us at info at got laundry delivers .com. Uh, unfortunately, the phone number that is public right now has changed due to COVID, um, and we have a new number, and I'm probably going to get a lot of dislikes for this one because uh, I don't have that number in my mind. So give me a second. Let me uh, tell you exactly what that number is. If you have no problem. Yeah. Yep. Jesus, Christmas, what is that number? <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. It's on the website. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> on, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, you can also reach us at dot laundry dot com. Yeah, yeah, right. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. You can also reach us at got laundry dot com, got laundry delivers dot com, and on the website is the correct phone number and address where we can directly be reached at. So I apologize for not having that number memorized. And and to my defense, you know, we live in a social media world. My handle is my, right. my, my Instagram mm -hmm. profile. My handle is my Facebook profile. And most right, people right. always ask me what my, my social media handle is and no longer take my phone number unless yeah. they want to call me or text me. And even then, I'm probably, I'll be a mentor. I don't know if I'm going to give you my number, though, but we'll talk right. about that later. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and we're very responsive to our um our social media. So again, like Ray said, that's the best way to um to get a hold of us. Um please check us out on Facebook and Instagram. You'll get all of our latest updates um of, of the things that we're doing um in and around the city. Uh like I said, we're um getting back into residential. Woo, 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 woo. We're so excited mm -hmm. to um to be a little bit closer to our um residential clients. Oh and, but safely, um, mm -hmm. you right. know, again, we, we just literally, we just miss them. So um, uh, continue to check out our Facebook at Got Laundry and our Instagram at Got Laundry as well for any new and um, for any new updates as well. And awesome. that number is 215-930-2353. Oh, look how you Teamwork, teamwork. <laughs> I dig it. Yeah, so, yeah. So the set the second thing, um, hopefully you guys could do for me, um, Black Boss tradition. I have all Black Boss participants say their name and then say that they're Black Boss. Oh, I like that. Let me tell you something. Let me get ready. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let me fix this, my this, this where I'm gonna go first. This where I'm gonna go first. Go ahead, boo. Ah, uh, you okay, be for okay. real. <laughs> Can I be for real? Can I be for real? Listen, I'm, I want the world to know. Nah, okay. Forgive me. All jokes aside, all seriousness. Hey guys, I'm Ray Wall. I'm also known as Mr. Got Laundry. And you can do what? What was the other part you asked for, Michelle? Say, Shit. I'm a black I'm so boy. Busy. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so busy in trying to. I'm You're going to have to edit all cute. this I'm stuff. All this stuff. Do it again, right? I'm trying, again. I'm trying to be cute and shit. Nah. <laughs> Racer, Racer, it is after seven. You get that. Yes. 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 I gave you the best of me. <laughs> I Man, my ADD started kicking in now, so I'm sorry. It's just, it's just yeah. Nah, I'm sorry. I, I got it. Take, take two. 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 All right. Okay, Philadelphia, listen here. I'm Ray Wall. I'm also known as Mr. God Laundry, and I am a black boss. Excellent, excellent. Okay. I'm gonna slide in your DM after this interview. Please do, please do, because I'm gonna reject you. 
<laughs> I am I am Takia Wall and I am a black boss. Oh, it's me, baby. Yes. Michelle, thank you um, for inviting us on to this platform. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. Um, please don't let this be the last time we cross we cross paths. Where you're on our radar, um, and we're firm believers of once we cross paths, uh, you can't get rid of us. So um, we're here. So um, you, you guys are family of family. So. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. So, so we're one. Thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity. We greatly appreciate it. No problem. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you guys. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. It's been fun. <laughs> Not a problem, guys. Thank you. Take, take care. Care. Thank you. It's been so much fun. You guys take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. I know you guys gotta gotta get it rolling. You got a household too. <laughs> well, we got a household, a house full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take care, Michelle. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. You got to leave out, right? Man, you know when sometimes that exit button ain't nowhere to be found. Damn it. I found it. I'm out. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was Takia and Ray Wall, um, founders and owners of Got Laundry. Uh, so much fun. It, it was really cool, you know, seeing their dynamic and everything. I think it, it's a great, um, seems like a great working relationship. Um Thank you so much for them joining me. It's always fantastic to hear about, you know, the heart behind um, someone, someone's business idea, especially when it is a service business and it may not be as, um, it may not be as clear as to why, you know, someone decided to start the business. But as always, see, I've been doing these interviews long enough. I'm starting to understand, <laughs> you know, even, even in, you know, service-based um service-based businesses, there's still a level of love for people. You know, there's still a level of um, the, the business owner loving to be in service of other people and loving um, what their business can do for other people. And, you know, the light that their business business can just bring to the lives of other people. So God Laundry was, was no different whatsoever. Thank you guys so much for your vision and what you're doing in the community around homelessness. And please continue to um, come up with all your awesome marketing ideas. It's really, really dope. Um, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Black Falls. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys are able to learn something. Um, shout out to... Uh, my Black Apparel Shop for hooking me up with this t-shirt, the Claire Huxable, Harriet Winslow, Aunt Viv, the dark skin one, and Florida Evans. This thing is hot. It's comfortable. I'm enjoying it. It's printed. It's printed very well. So I say it's it's very, very nice. So please follow uh, my black apparel shop on Instagram. Um, go go uh, pick out something. They have a bunch of great, I mean, this is just one of many awesome products and t-shirts that they have so please check out uh, my black apparel shop.com and again that's my black apparel shop um, on instagram so thank you so much again um, please continue the celebration uh, black boss follow me on instagram at um, black boss underscore certified um, follow me on facebook at black boss certified and for full episodes of black balls please check out um, black ball certified on youtube Thank you so much. You guys know I love doing this because it's so much fun. I get to see you guys. Not really. I don't really get to see you guys, but I get to see the participants and that's nice. So <laughs> um, you guys take care. Love you. Peace. <laughs>